Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to explain you two very important aspects of a flip-flop that is set up and hold time. As you all know, flip-flop is a memory element which is edge triggered. It can be positive edge triggered or negative edge triggered. In this example, I am taking positive edge triggered flip-flop. It has D as an input, Q as an output, C as a clock input. Whenever there is a positive edge on the clock input, D will be passed to Q. Otherwise, Q will hold its previous value. So this is very basic and crude level of behavioral definition of a flip-flop. But practically, if D need to be passed to Q, D must fulfill its setup and hold time requirement. So let us see it in a waveform. So clock and D are the two inputs of a flop. So D must be applied before the positive edge of the clock for some minimum time and the input need to be stable till the positive edge and this minimum time is called setup time even the input need to be stable after the clock edge for some minimum time and this time is called hold time so if input fulfills setup and hold time requirement then only D can be passed to Q precisely. So let us revise the definition of setup time and hold time. Setup time is the minimum time input need to be stable prior to the clock edge. And hold time is the minimum time input need to be stable after the clock edge. So in the main part of our episode we will learn from where does these two terms setup time and hold time comes why a flip flop need a setup and hold time so let us get started before going deep into the subject I want to tell you few very interesting facts about the nomenclature of a latch and a flip flop so this is a positive level sensitive latch it passes D to Q when this clock signal is high as shown in a figure so when clock is high D is passed to Q and when clock is low it will remain in its previous state or we call it as output is latched so from where this word latch come it came from our normal door latch so whenever latch is closed whatever is inside the room or a locker will remain inside that means value is latched and the extremely interesting fact about our flip-flop nomenclature it is made up of two words flip and flop flip means the device changes its state from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 and flop means failure usually you will listen the word flop along with movie episode serials if they fail but does our flip-flop also fail sometime yes my dear friends it fails whenever input D does not fulfill setup and hold requirement of a flop flip-flop also malfunctions it its output can be a metastable state it can come one or zero let us start the main part of the video so I am considering master slave, slave latch based flip-flop architecture so in this example I am considering posture edge trigger flip-flop so under these dotted lines represent a flip-flop it has D as an input clock as an input Q as an output 
and this flip flop is made up of two latches latch 1 and latch 2 latch 1 is negative level sensitive latch meaning if clock is 0 d1 will be passed to q1 if clock is 1 q1 will latch its previous value similarly latch 2 is positive level sensitive so if this clock input is high d2 will pass its value to q2 if clock is 0 then q2 will latch its previous value that means if latch 1 is passing d1 to q q2 will latch its previous value because we are applying the same clock to both both the latches if latch 2 is passing d2 to q2 q1 will latch its previous value so if we are applying clock signal to both both the latches on one level one of the latch will pass its input value and at that time another latch will hold its previous value so let us see uh, how these two latches together behave as a flip flop now in the waveform this is a clock signal so let us take d as an input signal so as an expectation from a flip flop if it is a positive edge trigger flip flop this is a positive edge and value of input d is high so q will become high and for the entire duration it will hold its value now at the next positive edge d is 0 so q will go 0 and will hold its value for the entire period of clock now here at this positive edge d is high so q will become high and will hold its value for the entire period so now let us see how these two latches prove this functionality now at this negative level when clock is 0 latch 1 will pass the value of d1 to q1 okay if we see at or before the edge d is high so d q1 will become high now when the positive edge comes latch 1 will latch its value 1 and latch 2 will pass it well, this value of d2 to q that means it will become high and because this value is latched and latch 2 is passing the value of d2 to q2 so for the positive level it will remain its value again when the negative level comes latch 2 will latch its previous value ok so that means q will remain high and when again the positive level comes and during uh, this level d is 0 so q1 will be 0 again when the positive level come d2 will start passing the value of d2 to q2 so q will become 0 and at the negative level it will hold its value and so on here you will not see any requirement of setup or hold time because we are taking the propagation delays of both the latches as 0 nanosecond. Coming to the practical scenario, latches will have propagation delays. So let us take each latch have 2 nanosecond delay because latch 1 is negative level sensitive latch obviously there will be some negation logic let us take it is 1 nanosecond ok the functionality will be same like I explained in the previous uh, figure 
so here when the clock level is negative that is logic 0 d1 is passed to q1 as we know and now the value at q1 will be the value of d1 before 2 nanosecond because the propagation delay is 2 nanosecond okay now if we see at this positive edge of the clock value at q1 is the value of d1 before 2 nanosecond so let us take this duration as 2 nanosecond and d was high so q1 is high now now suppose i am not applying d high before 2 nanosecond i am applying d as high after 1 nanosecond so at the positive edge of the clock what will be the value at q1 it will be 0 not 1 so that means we should apply the value before the prop before the clock edge for a minimum time that should be equal to the propagation delay of flash one that is 2 nanosecond so d should be applied before 2 nanosecond from the clock edge understood now when you know when this clock goes high immediately your lash 2 will start passing this value at q so q will become high at the positive level but as soon as clock goes high the value at the input will go high after one nanosecond that means this latch one is also passing the value of d1 to q1 so if we change this value it may hamper our output so that means we should not change the value of d for minimum one nanosecond that means we should hold the value of d even after the clock edge for one nanosecond that is equal to the delay of this not gate that is called hold time okay and the time before the clock edge we we need to make this value of d as high is called a setup time we should be equal to the propagation delay of flash one now last but not the least regarding setup time and hold time violation so for example if we are changing the value of d in the setup reason setup time reason so as per the architecture and fabrication technology of a latch it may pass some wrong value to the q1 and as a positive level come latch 2 may pass the wrong value at the q so similarly as we know for one nanosecond after this clock edge both the latches conduct so if we change the value in the whole time reason this value as per the architecture and fabricant technology of this latch one may pass to q1 some wrong value and that will be finally propagated to q if we are varying toggling input in setup reason it will cause setup violation if we are toggling d in the whole time reason it will call whole time violation but in both the cases output will be unpredictable viewers if you liked my video please share it with your friends press the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more videos and for notification you can press the bell icon thank you so much